The ancient land of Israel is a testimony, an evidence, if you will, of the greatness of what God did in that country, a testimony to the truth of the words that we find in the pages of the Bible. The people who lived here have left behind a record, an indelible record, if you will, of their lives. An important part of that record is the cities where they lived, ancient piles of debris that contain their culture, architecture, art, their diet, the weapons they used, and even on occasion, their writings. These piles of ancient cities, often built one on top of the other, are called tells. People in ancient times tended to build and live in the same places, maybe because there were occupations there or a main road went nearby, or maybe most likely of all, a source of fresh water. As archeologists began to peel away the layers of this ancient civilization, the culture and even the people of the Bible come to light. I'd like to ask you to join us on this adventure. We're going to try and understand the people, the context of the Bible. It'll mean some extra hiking, some climbing, some travel to out of the way places. But the end result, I think, will be well worth the effort as we discover again that God's word, God's message is as relevant for us as it was for them. The great roadway that connected the empires of the ancient world is called the Via Maris, the way of the sea. All important countries and civilizations of Bible times traveled back and forth on that road. That road goes through a very crucial mountain pass. That mountain pass is guarded by the greatest of the ancient cities, the city of Megiddo. Some would even say that it becomes the place which symbolizes the battle that will end the world itself. We're on a tell called Tel Megiddo, right at the edge of the plain that was called the Plain of Jezreel. Some Christians refer to it as the Plain of Armageddon. We'll call it by its Hebrew name, the Plain of Jezreel. To the east of us, the great eastern empires of Assyria, Babylon, and Persia, with their silks and their cloth and their spices and all the exotic things. To the south and west of us, Egypt that huge, powerful, technologically advanced nation with its food supply and access to salt and other kinds of things. And those two empires really needed each other, and so they traded back and forth. Now, due to the desert here to our east, really the only way the trade route could go easily is to go to the north along the rivers until they got north of the desert and go down through this piece of land we call Canaan or Israel down to Egypt. If there's one place where that road could be controlled, it's right here at Megiddo. And for that reason, before the Bronze Age, people came here to live, not only because of the fertility of the valley, but also because this city stood right here and guarded that pass through which the trade route went and therefore could exert control over the world. Some scholars say, that more battles have been fought down there in the Jezreel Valley in front of you right here than any other place in the world known to history. So you have to imagine the bloodshed down here in this valley, most of it done simply to exert control over this spot because this spot controlled the world. Probably the most significant passage about this place in the Bible is in 1 Kings where it describes King Solomon's power and glory. Solomon, you remember, had become king in the south in Jerusalem. He had been put on the throne there that his father David had held, and Solomon asked God for wisdom. So God said, I'll give you wisdom, but I'm gonna give you greatness also. Solomon became the richest king who had ever lived. He had money, he had power, he stretched the kingdom to the north and the south and to the east, probably the greatest Israelite king in terms of total power to ever live. Well, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 9 that Solomon fortified 
Gezer, Megiddo, and Chatzor. Now, that tells you from a Hebrew way how Solomon controlled the world. What made Solomon rich? God did. How did God do it? By giving Solomon the strength to control this trade route. So world control right here, and Solomon had it. This city controls the world because it controls the trade route. In the book of Revelation, the writer is talking about the continuing battle between good and evil. And he writes it this way. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Now what makes this Armageddon? Well, we're standing on a hill, a mound, a mount. In Hebrew, Har, H-A-R. So we're at Har Megiddo. 